Welcome to Cavaletto Studios, I'm Chris. Today we will work to soften the fascia tissue to improve the range of motion in the primary joints of the body. Enhancing the mobility in our feet and ankles assists with balance and how the upper body moves. Targeting areas around the knees and hips also improves joint health. Our reach, too, is dependent upon the tension in our shoulders. We have so many opportunities to improve our movement as we use the foam roller to massage out those trigger points. We will also use the tennis ball and a small bouncy ball. So let's get started. We're going to begin nice and tall with the tennis ball. We're going to bring, put the tennis ball underneath the ball of your foot. So we're on, I'm on my right foot, my right heel is on the floor, the ball of the foot is on the tennis ball, and we're just doing a gentle press release, pushing into the foot on that tennis ball. As you press into it, make sure you're not putting too much pressure that it causes any nerve pain, don't wanna break any blood vessels, so it's a comfortable little massage or a little squish into that tissue. When you come up, think about lifting up those toes, spreading them out, and then curling the toes down around that tennis ball. Continue to press release, so we're really gonna get into that fascia tissue on the bottom of the foot. So we have, um, all the toes have the joints along the toes, so we want them to be able to be mobile and move. So then you're going to keep the heel on the floor, the right heel, start to rock your foot side to side. So it's rolling over from the inside to the outside edge of the ball of the foot on that tennis ball, side to side. Then you're going to bring your foot slightly forward so that tennis ball moves a little deeper into the arch. And again, rock that foot side to side. So it's very important that the joints of our feet are mobile, that they can move because it helps when we walk. It helps lessen the impact if we have mobility in our foot. Bring it up a little deeper into that arch. So you're getting closer to the heel, but your right heel is still on the floor and you're standing firmly on that left leg for balance. Then you're going to take your right foot, and I want you to lift the right heel, place your right ball of the foot and the toes on the floor, but spread out your toes as much as you can, and then rock that foot side to side. Again, getting back deep into that arch. Work your way towards the heel with the tennis ball. Just a little back and forth. Then you're going to, with balance, if you need a wall, you can, you're going to slide your foot forward and back along that tennis ball. So the tennis ball goes from your heel to the toes, along the arch, along the inside edge, and you can even go along the outside edge of the arch. If you find a tender spot or a trigger point, you can pause on it for a moment, just breathe a little pressure, but nothing where it's very, very painful. If you have plantar fasciitis, you might have some very tender spots. Just move on past them if it's too much. Then you're going to release the foot and we're going straight to the left foot. So you're gonna place the left heel on the floor, lift the ball of the foot, place it firmly right in the center on that tennis ball. And then a gentle press release. Just noticing what's going on in that foot. Do you have more range of motion in this foot than the other? Are they about the same? Does it feel a little stiffer, or a little crunchies in there? Think about your toes. Lift the toes, spread them out, and then let them wrap down around that tennis ball or close to it. Then we're gonna take that tennis ball, or the foot, and we're gonna draw it side to side on the tennis ball so that it goes from the inside to the outside edge of the ball of the foot. The heel is still on the floor. Continue moving side to side. Again, not pushing too hard into the part where right below that big toe because you don't want to um, cause any damage to that joint. We want to be gentle, massaging it out. Then you're going to slide your foot forward so that tennis ball goes 
deeper into that arch, heel still on the floor, and then rock that foot side to side. So the feet you can massage out. I mean, you could do this like every night before bed or in the morning when you get up. Both jump start your day, relax your feet at night, moving it deeper into that foot. And if you don't have a tennis ball, you know, a racquetball, I've heard lacrosse ball, those are a little bit on the harder side. So just something that's comfortable for your foot, massaging it out. Then you're going to flip your foot so the ball of your foot's on the floor, the heel comes up, you're deep into the back of that arch, almost touching the heel there, and draw the foot side to side. And then moving into the heel, bringing that foot forward, massaging along the heel. And you're on a bone here, so it might be a little tender. Then draw that foot forward and back from the toes to the heels, going along the arch on the inside edge, on the outside edge. One more. Then go ahead and set your tennis ball to the side. We're going to stretch out the feet. And then after we stretch the feet, we'll be going to the floor. So open up those toes, press into the ball of the foot, and then gently press up and down into that foot. So you really want to spread out the toes, stretching the bottom of that foot. Because you want to have mobility and movement in that ball, all the way up into the toes. We're going to the left foot. Last one before we move to the floor. Massage it out. Pressing into the foot. Really massage it out. Rock that foot. When you lift the heel and go into the ball of the foot, rock that foot side to side. So you can really feel that stretch through the bottoms of the toes. And now we're going to be moving to the floor. Now that we are down here, we're going to keep our tennis ball close by. Uh, we're going to continue working through the foot and the ankle. So keeping up with that mobility. We're going to hold on to the, so we're going back to our right foot. And you can sit however you want. If you have a block or you want to sit on your foam roller, just give yourself a little space. If you can, bring your fingertips right underneath the ball of the foot, thumbs on the top, and you're going to grab hold of that foot. And you're just going to do like you're trying to press it, the bottom of the foot together, and then open it back up. It's just a very tiny little movement. Just massaging it out. So you're pressing it open and closed. And maybe your foot doesn't move very much. Maybe you don't have a lot of movement. You can even press the top of the foot forward and pull the outside edge of the foot up. So push now. Instead of together, you're pushing them in the opposite directions. Just getting a little movement there and then pressing into the base of each toe, just a gentle press. See if you get any kind of release. Then we're going to take the tennis ball, your tennis ball, find the outside ankle bone right there, that nice big bone, place that tennis ball right on the front of it so it's sitting on the outside edge of the foot. There's a little divot probably in there, a little spot for the tennis ball. And then place your foot right on top of the tennis ball with that tennis ball by that ankle bone right there, not on the bone. You don't want this to be painful. And then just again, gentle press of holding on to the foot. So you're wrapping your right hand around that right foot. Thumb is on the bottom of the foot and press the foot into the tennis ball and then take your left hand, place it on the calcaneus or your heel bone and press that down as well. So almost like, again, peeling, pushing the opposite direction, like you're trying to wrap it around that tennis ball. You're not going to feel any kind of movement, but the fascia knows what's going on. There's a nervous system that we, it runs all through the fascia. That our nervous system does. Everything is affected here. You can even start to just draw tiny little circles with the foot right on top of that tennis ball. Again, as long as it doesn't hurt. Getting right down into that soft tissue there. If you're getting into the bone, kind of avoid that area. It might be a little tender. 
Then you're going to release the tennis ball, place your foot back on the floor. You're going to take your hands, and this might be a little challenging for some of you, but that's all right, do the best you can. You're going to take each finger and try to press it in between the toes. So you thread the fingers between the toes. And you can leave your heel on the floor and just make little circles with your wrist massaging through those toes. Or you can even bring the foot up on the thigh. Again, whatever feels good to you. And then start to move through that whole foot. If you can lift your foot off the floor and then big circles all the way through the ankle, the toes, the ball of the foot, and then change direction. This helps with balance as well, getting those nerve endings, getting that fascia tissue, everything loosened up so it can communicate better with each other. Especially in an unstable environment, we want that ankle to be fully functional and support us. Especially if you play any sports, pickleball, golf, tennis, maybe you're out shoveling snow, all those walking on ice, ice skating. Then go ahead and release that foot. Let's go to the other foot. So now we're gonna go to the left foot. We're gonna first start by placing the fingertips on the ball of the foot, wrapping the palms around the outside edges of your foot, thumbs up by the toes, and just little, try to fold your foot and open. It's a small movement. I know it might feel awkward. Like, why would I do this? Well, you need your foot, because if you're walking and it's just slamming the foot, you want it to gently roll. That way it lessens the impact. It protects the other joints above the foot, like the knees and the hips and the low back. And then if you can, press um, opposite ways, just moving it gently. If you've had any issues with your feet or you've hurt your ankles or sprained them, you might find some resistance here and less mobility. And then a little press at the base of each toe with the thumb. Then you're gonna take your tennis ball and again, find that bony spot right there at the ankle bone. Place the tennis ball right in front of it uh, like on the edge of that foot there, and then place your foot on the floor. You're going to hold on to, with your left hand, the top of your left foot. Right hand goes on that heel bone. And then gently press them both towards the floor. Like you're wrapping the front, the top and the heel around that tennis ball. And then just start to draw little circles or just tiny little movements right in that spot. Maybe you go a little lower. Just play around all through the outside edge there of that ankle. Again, if you've had any issues, broken ankles, sprained ankles, you might find some, some tender spots. Just be gentle with the body. So as we soften the tissue in the different areas throughout the body, we're going to find more mobility in the joints because it all connects around those joints. Then when you're done with that tennis ball, go ahead and set it to the side. And this is where you're going to take your fingertips and you're going to try to interlace them between each toe. And then just little circles, little press release. Also, you might find the toes on one foot more resistant than the other foot, a little more restrictive, and that's all right. Then you can start to build on that. You can circle the whole ankle, lifting it off the floor. Maybe you have your legs crossed. Maybe you want to keep your foot on the floor. That's okay. Again, just options. And then reverse direction. Feels so good. And then release. Feel how that, how, maybe you have some blood flow to the toes. Now you're going to release that foot. If you need a drink of water, feel free to grab a drink of water. We're going to go to our foam roller now. So go ahead and set your tennis ball to the side. And we're going to dive into the calf. 
So getting into the calf, these the muscles all in the calf dive down and they attach into the ankle and the knee. So really when those calves get tight can cause all kinds of issues in both the joints below and above it. So go ahead and start with your right leg. We're going to place that lower part of the calf on the roller. Now we're going to just guide the body along the whole distance of that calf. So you're lifting your body off the floor and drawing your body towards the front of the mat. So the roller goes up to the top of the calf, close to behind the knee, and then back to the ankle. Now if this is too much on your arms to lift your body, you can just do a very big bend and straighten of the right knee and massage that whole area. Or just take little breaks and scoot yourself along the mat with your arms. So just gliding along. So this is just gonna touch on the different areas that will affect those joints below and above the tissue. Then you're going to let your hips go back to the floor, turn your whole right leg to the right, shift your body weight to the right glute, and then draw your body again up and down. So you're going along the lateral back head of the calf muscle, or the outer back edge of that lower leg of that right leg, massaging it out. You can bend and straighten, you can glide your body. Then you're gonna sit again, turn your body the opposite way. So now you're going to the left, leaning to the left hip. That left back edge of the calf is on the roller and you're gonna massage along. And you can always get much deeper into the tissue, adding some foot and ankle rolls and you can feel how different that feels if you add that in. Now I want you to lower your hips to the floor. Bring the roller right in the middle of the meaty part of your calf, your gastroc. We're gonna drop to the elbows, and then we're gonna drop and rock our hips side to side. So you're rolling across the back of that calf. And really relax your right foot and ankle. And notice if you find any spots when you rock. If you do rotate the ankle on that spot, both direct directions. And then bring that roller below the meaty part of the calf. So you're between the middle of the calf and the ankle. And you're still on your elbows and you're rocking yourself side to side. And add some ankle rotations if you need to. And this is where you can just figure out, is it more higher up in the calf or lower down where you have some resistance going on and you can focus on it later. Now we're going to come back up. We're gonna switch legs. We're going to the left, hands on the floor, and again, drawing the body straight up and down. Just a great way to touch on that tissue, get it massaged out, that fascia tissue. Think of that sponge, you're squeezing out the sponge so it can rehydrate, get nutrients and hydration into that soft tissue, that fascia. Which if you didn't know or you've forgotten, the fascia runs through our whole body. Our nervous system runs through it, it affects everything. Now, you're gonna lower your hips, turn your whole body to the left, go to the outside edge of that left lower calf and lower leg and roll all the way. Sliding the body or just bending and straightening the knee. Last one, and then lower the hips, tilt your whole body to the right, go to the inside edge and roll. This is a great upper body warm up as well if you're lifting your body off the floor and it's working the core. Bonus, it's always good to have those. Then lower your hips to the floor, bring the roller right in the middle of the meaty part of the calf, go ahead and drop to your elbows on the floor, and then rock your hips side to side. Now if you find a tender spot, just pause on it, rotate the ankle, and you might find that the calf has some knots in it. You get to go there later on on your own massaging them out or just pause on those spots right here quickly and rotate that ankle. And then bring the roller lower so it's on the lower part of the calf. 
between the middle of the calf and the ankle. And then rock those hips side to side, massaging it out. So like I was saying, the gastroc comes up, the, bat one of the, calf, the big meaty part of the calf, gastrocnemius, it attaches right above that knee joint. And then it comes down, and then underneath that you've got your soleus, attaches right below the knee. Go ahead and release that foot, both feet. Go ahead and set your, your roller to the side and you're gonna get your tennis ball. So because those muscles attach in different areas and we don't wanna to put too much pressure in the very back of the knee, we wanna be mindful of our joints. So we're going to take the tennis ball. You're gonna take it, let's go to the right leg since we keep staying on the right this time. Take the tennis ball and you're gonna place it behind the right knee but you want it sticking out enough that you can see it and then bend your right knee and hug it in. So I'm gonna keep holding my tennis ball in the place where it is right behind my right knee as I squish it in, bend that right knee in close to the chest. So the knee, the tennis ball is sticking out on the outside edge of that knee. You can see it. Like. And once it's there, lift your right foot Flex it, but keep the heel on the floor and then just draw that foot side to side. So you might feel that all the way up in that gastroc, that edge of that knee where it's attaching. Then you can pull the whole foot off the floor if you'd like and try circles and other direction. And maybe you feel something here, maybe you don't. Maybe it'll be on the other leg. Everybody's a little different. Then you're gonna take the tennis ball out same leg, but we're now going to take the tennis ball behind the knee on the inside, but it's still sticking out slightly. So you might have to make some adjustments. I'm holding it in place. Lift the foot and then just rock the foot side to side. You can point and flex. You can lift it off the floor and draw circles. And again, maybe you feel this, maybe you don't. Usually I have some people feel one leg and not the other. So again, they come up when they really tight, you get those knots, it can pull the knees out of alignment. And again, you can see how it can affect the ankle as well. Let's go to the left. So now that you've done back of that right knee, let's go to the left. So tennis balls on the outside edge behind the left knee, bend that left knee, hug it in, and then lift the toe off the floor, the left toes, it heels on the floor and draw the foot side to side. Are you noticing a difference? I immediately notice a difference from one side to the other. And then maybe lift the foot off the floor and circle your ankle. So we're still trying rotating. When we rotate that ankle, we're increasing our mobility, getting things moving, change direction of the rotation. You might get a snap crackle pop as long as it's not painful. Then we're going to take that tennis ball out. Go ahead and set it to the side. So we got the back of the calf on the edges. Now we're going to do one more spot, the shin. And we're just going to use our fingers along the edge of the shin. And if you would like, you can also use the tennis ball just to massage down, making sure you're not hitting the bone, the shin bone. So you can take that tennis ball, you can flex the foot massaging it down around the outside edge, or you can even take your fingers and just massage around, trying to move that tissue away from the bone. So you're kind of pushing out. I'm on my left now. I just stayed on the same leg and going all the way down. And again, sometimes it's nice, a little massage with that tennis ball, tiny little circles as you work up the, cat, the shin and let your foot relax on the floor as well. So you have two different positions of your ankle when you're massaging that shin. One, your foot is up. So when it's up, it's contracting. You're getting in there and then you relax it, putting the foot to the floor, plantar flex it, and massage along the, the shin. And again, use your fingers if that feels like if you got a knot and you can even bring the foot. If you find a knot, here's the secret. Find a knot either with your fingers or the tennis ball and then flex and point the foot. Lift and lower the foot off the floor. Finding those, anybody surprised at how much those shins like, oh. This also is a great preventative for shin splints. 
as it gets so tight in there. Once you're done with that shin, we're gonna go to the other one. If you're not done, keep working on it, that's fine. So again, flex the right foot, massage that tennis ball down, or use your fingers. So if you have options here, don't forget to get down close to that ankle because all of that those tissues connect down through the top. So you want to get that mobility in the ankles going. We want mobility in the knees and that the knees are not being pulled in one direction when they want to go another direction. They're causing tension. Massaging it out. It's a great one you can do when you're watching TV, just hanging out. Just massage along that shin. Circle, point, and flex if you find a trigger point. Now for real, we're setting the tennis ball aside. We're going to stretch out the calf and the shin, everything we just did. So to do that, we're going to bring the foam roller across the mat. And then I want you to turn around and go into tabletop bring the tops of your toes on top of that roller. So we want to stretch the shins all the way through the ankle to the toes. So the tops of your feet are not on the roller, your tippy toes, the very tops of your toes, knees apart. And then if your knees are okay with it, you can start to hinge your hips backwards towards your heels. So you're really stretching the shins and the ankles. And just breathe here. Feel that nice stretch. Some people, if you're a swimmer, a lot of times you have, you can easily point those feet. You have a lot of flexibility this way. But in the calves, it ends up being tight. A lot of people are tight in the calves. Now you're gonna release, bring the roller forward so the very tops of your shin, the back of your, basically your ankle is on the roller. You can flex your feet. Now we're gonna go into a calf and foot stretch. You're gonna lift your knees, use your hands to push yourself backwards so your toes go on the floor. You can even use the roller and just shift your hips side to side, massaging out, stretching out all the way through the bottoms of the feet and the ankles. And then we're gonna get a little deeper into the calf, lower the knees to the floor. Your hands can stay on the roller or the floor. Draw your right foot back to the back of the mat. Push the ball of your foot into the mat. Lift the hips up, so really stretching through that calf. And then do a gentle bend and straighten of the right knee. Pushing into that toe, really stretching it out. If you want to lift a little higher with the hips towards the down dog, you can. And then slowly lower that right knee. Let's check the left one. So press the left foot to the back of your mat really stretching through that calf and then lift the hips and once you get there slightly bend and straighten that left knee so when we straighten and bend the left knee we're getting into again the gastroc and the soleus two different muscles are they're happy to be stretched after we foam rolled all that fascia tissue surrounding those areas then we're going to lower the knees to the floor, separate your knees, feet together. Now we're gonna take a child's pose and just stretch out the low back here and let those feet rest. Reach your arms forward. We're also gonna check our range of motion in our shoulders while we're at it. So bring your hands to the outside edge of your roller, melt your belly between your thighs, and then lower your head to the floor and breathe. Just feel the stretch in the shoulders. See if there feels any restriction or the chest and then slowly come up. Moving on, we're going to move higher up into the glutes now. So we got the lower leg, very important for the knees and the ankles. So let's drop to our right butt cheek on the roller. So you're gonna lift yourself onto the roller, right hand is behind it, right butt cheek's on the roller. Both feet are flat on the floor, knees bent. Let's roll the whole right glute. So you're thinking, okay, the joint of the, the hip, everything attaches up into the hips, the legs, the back, the front and the back. So we really need to 
get into the glutes, we're gonna get into the TFL, and then the front of the quads, because that is an area that does inhibit the mobility of our hips when these areas get super tight. Now you're gonna take your right ankle and place it across your left thigh, and then roll some more, getting into that nice and deep. When we release this tish the tissues of the glutes, it just really helps that. The back mobility even helps, believe it or not, the shoulder mobility. We sit a lot on our butts, right? Especially if we're sitting on a, at a desk all day. All the way to the top and the bottom. Then we're gonna drop to our elbow, our right elbow on the floor. Keep the knee bent. Go to the middle of the glute and then drop your right knee forward, coming in front of that roller. And then extend that right leg straight out, getting into that TFL. So you're not completely on your side. You're between the side and the glute, that TFL. But then I'm gonna let you get to the side and to the glute by you're gonna roll side to side, like you're rolling towards your belly and then rolling backwards to the glute. Now, if you find a sweet spot right in the middle there, whatever's a little bit sensitive, I like to say, find that spot. So you're leaning a little bit towards that belly and then bring that right knee in and out. Slide it in and out. Getting a little deeper into that TFL. One more. Extend the right leg straight. Now, bring your left foot in front of the right. So you're tilting even more to that side. So you're really laying on that right side. The front of the, not all the way to the front, but pretty close to the right front side. And now you're gonna do a very small little rock side to side. So if you went straight backwards, you would be on your glute again, but you're now in the front of that hip area. Then you're gonna roll back, uncross that left leg, push yourself up, and then just lean over to the opposite side. Turn over to go to your left. You're up on your left hand, both knees bent, and roll your left butt cheek. So much area of the body to roll, so little time. So we gotta get through it all. So all the way to the top and bottom of that left glute. We still have the whole upper body to go and I have a bonus. Today we're gonna do the hands. Really get the arms and the shoulders moving, the elbow joint, the shoulder joint. Then we're gonna take your left ankle, cross it over the right thigh and continue rolling that whole glute, opening up that knee. And we're just, we're getting into a lot of the main muscle groups today and the tissue that does affect the joints. We're not gonna be able to hit every single one. We'd be here for two hours. So go ahead and drop it to the elbow. Find the middle of that glute and start to draw your body side to side, rocking along that glute. And then bring that left knee open, bring it down towards the floor. Go ahead and release that left leg straight. So now you're again, towards the outside edge of that glute, almost towards the hip, start to lean it, and then bring that knee in and out. Pull the knee into the chest and straighten it out. One more. Go ahead and straighten it out. Lean a little more towards the, um, the belly, towards the roller, so you're going more on the side. Bring your top leg in front and rock gently side to side. Might be a little tender there, and one side might be more than the other. Just means you're normal. And release, good. Uncross that right leg. Go ahead and sit yourself all the way up and slide forward off of your roller. Straighten out your left leg. Let's cross the right foot over. Let's give it a stretch. So a couple options here. You can have your left leg straight if you want to get more into the stretch of the, both the joints, the knees, the hips, you can also bend your bottom left leg and bring your left foot towards your right glute. So it'd be more like this. If your foot doesn't go there or doesn't feel comfortable to the knees, keep that leg straight. We're gonna hug that right knee with the left hand. Lift as tall as you can through the spine and then just add a twist. So we're getting nice and deep 
hugging it, stretching the glute hip all the way up into the knee. And then we're even touching on the back now. Start to turn your head the opposite way, looking away over your right shoulder. Take a deep breath in, exhale it out. And then go ahead and release. And we're gonna switch sides. So you'll straighten both legs, sit up nice and tall. Pull your left foot across to your right and we're gonna hug it in. And maybe you stay there or you lean to the right, bend your right knee and bring your foot to your left butt cheek. Turn so you can see, hugging that left knee with the right arm. Lift through that spine, add a little twist. And just notice the difference in the hips if one is tighter than the other. And after we do this, we're going to quads. So we're gonna finish up around this hip area. And then we will release. Go ahead and unwind the legs, give them a shake. Shake, shake. Now we're gonna to go to quads, the front of the thighs. So it's really, this is the one that's a bonus for the knees, big time, and the back even. So you're gonna come into a plank position on your elbows, like an elbow plank, and you're pressing your feet into the mat and bringing that roller right above the knees. So you don't wanna hit the knee joint. Remember, we never roll over the joints of the body. We wanna stay into the tissue that connects around the joints. Then once you're there, I want you to relax your feet as much as you can. And then you're just gonna do a gentle roll forward and back one inch, hands on the floor, elbows on the floor, pull the shoulders away from the ears. Then walk your elbows backwards an inch, move that roller up the body up the thighs an inch, roll forward and back. And again, the key here is trying to relax the quads. Way easier said than done. But think about your quads kind of like, um, think of them as almost a rubber band. So they stretch down and wrap around and attach to different areas of the knee and then back into, up into the hips. Well, which at the very top, pretend like it's thicker, like a wider band and the bottom is a little bit thinner. Well, the top thicker part's gonna have more control in telling which way it's gonna pull harder. So if something's wrong at the top of that quad, so as we get to the top, think of it as thicker. So they might have some tissue, you've been sitting a lot, it gets really tight, might have some trigger points in the top there, it is pulling the knee out of alignment even if it's ever so subtly. So then you're gonna pause when you get to the top of those quads. I want you to just bend the right knee and then bend the left. And then gently just rock those legs side to side. Now be mindful of that low back, pull the belly in. You don't wanna have any back pain here. And then start to circle those legs. So the knees want some freedom here. They don't want to be restricted by the top of these thick thighs trying to pull them one way or the other because the muscle tissue is a little bit stronger or it's got something going on there like a trigger point, some adhesions that this fascia tissue is being restricted because it affects it all the way down or up. See if you can walk your elbows backwards a little more, go a little higher and draw little tiny circles with those feet. If this is too painful, then just keep with your little movements. These are just options. Just continue this all the way up till you can't go any higher comfortably. And then you'll release your legs straight out behind you. And we're gonna slide off of the roller to the back. And let's separate the knees and come back to a child's pose. This time, bring your hands together on the roller nice and close and then just draw the roller straight out, really stretching through the shoulder armpit area, lowering yourself towards the floor, belly between the thighs, and then come all the way up. We're gonna do one more quick roll of the foam roller on the thighs, just cause quads can always use more. The good news is the more you roll, the less it hurts. So let's do it again. Back to the elbows right above the knees with that roller. This time, bring your knees and feet 
all the way together, you're going to rock and roll side to side. And continue that rock and roll, nice and gentle, moving slowly up the thighs. I know, don't hate me for this. It can be a little sensitive. Some of you might be out there going, oh my goodness, this is painful. So the bad news is, if it hurts, it means you need it. The good news is, the more you roll, the less it hurts. The key too, again, is stretching after you're done to really hydrate that tissue and then it won't be as painful. Continue moving up those thighs as you move your body back. Rock and roll, just a little. You're only doing maybe two or three rock and roll side to side as you move up the thighs, so not a long time. Once you're at the top, you're just gonna slide off. If you're not, work your way there. We're gonna put the roller to the side. Like I said, we wanna stretch those quads. So this time we're gonna to come to the belly because we wanna get all the way up into that hip. So we're gonna reach back and you're gonna grab one foot. Just, I'm taking my left hand, I'm reaching for my left foot. Try to bring your knees closer together and pull your heel towards your glute. Options here, if you cannot use, um, reach your foot, you can use a strap or a belt. You can also try laying on your side. Sometimes it's easier to grab your foot. But even if you do, if your knee is in front of your hip, I want you to pull that knee back. So if you still can't reach your foot, just bring your foot behind you on the floor and push your hip forward so that knee comes in alignment. The key is to stretch all the way up into that hip and down to the knee. So we really wanna lengthen that tissue. Take a breath. Knees are together as much as it's comfortable. Pulling that heel to the glute again, another breath. And you wanna hold these stretches for 10 to 20 seconds, 10 minimum, 20 better, 30 is even best. And then go ahead and release. Now you can always stretch them more, but for time's sake, we only have this much demonstration purposes. Go ahead and switch legs. So now you're gonna grab the other foot. And again, maybe one leg you can hold and reach and the other you can't. That's fine, just use that strap or block, I mean, or belt, not a block. And then option to lay on your side or bring that leg behind you on the floor and push the hip forward, really opening up that hip and hip flexor, pulling the heel to the glute, knees together. And notice where you feel the pull. Maybe you feel it towards the outside bottom edge of that quad, closer to the knee. One more breath. And then we're going to release. Go ahead and sit all the way up. And here you can sit on a block or your roller. We're just gonna sit up nice and tall. And we're gonna move up the body. So now we got the bottom part pretty loose and we're gonna go to the hands. We gotta jam on up from the hands, forearm and get those shoulders and upper back. So I've got two balls here. I got a tennis ball that we used on the feet. If you don't have anything smaller than this, I'm using a little, it's actually a hand therapy ball, but if you were a kid and you played jacks or had those little bouncy balls, these are a great size. Um, a little kiwi lime, they're, what are they called? Yeah, ki little, the little limes, they, they're about the same size. So whether you have a bouncy ball or a tennis ball, you're just gonna place the ball on the floor, place your hand, let's start with the right, on top of the ball and just move very slowly like you're scrubbing the floor along the knuckles of your hand. So if it's a tennis ball, you're just going along here, along the knuckles and you can move down into the palm, you can move back and forth across the base of the palm. Now you might find, if you have a small little ball, you might find what we call crunchies. Those are the crystallized tissue. You really wanna work that out. You pause on it and wiggle the fingers. If you got the tennis ball, maybe you'd, you move your hand like you're juicing an orange and then move it back and forth and around. You might even find crunchies with that tennis ball, especially the right hand if you use the mouse a lot and you're working on the computer. The thumb, base of the thumb can get pretty tight. Now, once you're done with the hand, we're gonna to go to the other hand. So go to the other, the left hand, and then draw it along. Now, the left might not feel as sensitive if you are right-handed or just using that mouse and um, 
and not having as many trigger points. So just massaging it out. Again, either one, juicing the orange using that tennis ball, massaging it out. This is also great getting the tissue hydrated. Going all the way to the fingertips, into the base of that thumb and along the base of the palm, getting the whole palm massaged out. Now, if you only have the tennis ball, you're gonna hold the tennis ball in your fingertips and just do a gentle squeeze and release, really just getting the fingertips to work and then separating the fingers and the knuckles. So you're getting some space in those joints. If you have a little one, little ball, you can place it between your fingers, the pinky finger and the ring finger and do a gentle press release. And then you go to each finger and do this. Squeeze, it's just maybe, maybe like six to 10 squeezes and then you go to the next one. So again, getting space in the joints of the fingers. Helps with arthritis too, because you want hydration and movement, even between the thumb and the forefinger. And then go to the other hand if you haven't, if you've got a little one and you want to go between the fingers, or you use the tennis ball and do the squeeze and release. And not overdoing it. Like I said, if you have arthritis and squeeze release is getting, it's very tiring and hard on the hand, just maybe flip it the hand on the tennis ball up and down on the floor. Be mindful, make adjustments for your body. We are on the other hand, squeeze, release. You can wave while you do it. And then when you're done with its little bouncy ball, we are gonna set the bouncy ball to the side and then, or your tennis ball. We're gonna set it all the way to the side. So we are done with the ball. So you're gonna take your foam roller now and you're gonna to come to tabletop and we're gonna bring it acrosswise on, that, on the mat. Bring your right palm up and you place your forearm on the roller. So your fingertips are pointing to the front of the mat. Your forearm is on the roller, you're on your knees. And then place your left hand on top of the right and then draw that roller along the forearm. So now, <clears throat> we are massaging that, the tissue that connects the wrist and the elbow, and it affects big time our fingers. Then you're gonna turn your palm down, place the left hand on top, and then massage the bottom of that forearm. Go ahead and switch, place your left palm up, forearm of the left arm on the roller, right hand on top, we're just going to the left forearm and massage it out. Then switch your left hand down, palm down and roll. Massaging out. Then you're going to release, go ahead and bring the roller just right in front of you for right now. Take both your fingertips, spread them out and place them in front of your knees on the floor and then press gently into the fingers. Palms are up. And then a little press. Now you're gonna go all the way down into the palms, pressing them into the floor and a little bit of a rock forward and back, in, forward into the palms and then back. Then you're gonna rock side to side, going to the outer edge and the inner edge of each hand. The thumb can come up as you rock. You're gonna flip your palms, they're staying down, but turn your palm, fingertips towards your knees. So your inside of your elbows are facing the front of your mat. And again, just a gentle rock back and forth, never forcing anything. Stretching out those forearms. Center yourself over your wrist. Now f keep your fingertips facing your feet, but flip your palms up. So the back of the, the hands go on the floor. Now from here, just wiggle and rotate your elbows. Turn the inside of your elbows to the front of the mat and then toward your body. 
rotating. You might feel that stretch all the way into the forearms. Then flip your palms back down, pressing into the floor and a little rock side to side. So hopefully you get some more movement there. Tuck your toes under and then lean back onto your heels and massage out the wrists. You can make a fist and pretend like you have a hammer. You're just going forward and back. So now your fingers, so the tissue in the forearm goes all the way up and affects our fingertips. So now we're going to get to upper back and really get things, the final moving. So just massaging the fascia on our feet actually does help our upper back mobility and our shoulder mobility. So we're going to finish that up here and get it nice and mobile. So bring the roller behind you. If you have long hair, make sure it's out of the way because the roller will eat your hair or a long shirt. You're going to lean back into the upper part of the shoulder blades, fingertips wide behind the ears, feet flat. We're going to lift the hips and roll that whole upper back. And as you're rocking and rolling, notice the ankles, the calf muscles, all the way up into the back, how things are moving now. Maybe if you have some one side tighter than the other. And try to slow your rolling down now. Really slow it down. Think about your breath. If there's any natural chiropractic adjustments when you go on that roller. Think about a sponge, like you're just hydrating that tissue, massaging out anything that shouldn't be there so the new nutrients can get in. One more. Then you're going to roll to the top of those, close to the top of the shoulder blades, lower your hips to the floor. We're going to bring the knees together and the feet together, drop both knees to your left, and then pivot into your left armpit. So the left armpit goes right on top of that roller and the elbow goes on the floor behind you. Take your right hand and just reach it over your head behind you and then draw your chest towards the roller and then lean backwards into that shoulder blade. Now, if you're missing lymph nodes, do not roll into that area. Just stay back on the shoulder blade. Now from here, you're going to keep that right hand over your head, extend the left arm as well, hold on to your left wrist and let your head rest on your left arm or shoulder. And then rock yourself again, side to side towards the armpit, back into the shoulder blade, and then now make adjustments. Maybe go a little, roll up a little higher so you go down into those lats and then roll backwards so you go higher up into the shoulder and the tricep and armpit. Little rock and roll, getting into any of those areas that are tight. One more. And then you're going to come all the way into the center to the back, fingertips behind the ears so you can make sure the neck is supported. Lift the hips, roll four times up and back. One more, and then go to the top, lower the hips, drop both knees together to the right, roll into that right armpit, right arm on the floor, left arm overhead, rock towards your chest wall, and then back into that shoulder blade. One more time. Now, pause in the middle, reach the left arm over, reach then the right hand over, hold your right wrist with your left hand, let your head drop into your shoulder and then rock again side to side. Maybe sliding your body up so your roller goes down into those lats a little more. Be mindful of the rib cage, not getting too deep into it. Then move your body down so the roller goes higher up into the armpit and the tricep and the upper part of that shoulder blade as you rock side to side. One more rock. And then come all the way back to center. Release the arms and then sit yourself all the way up. A couple shoulder rolls. Not quite done. Take, sit up nice and tall. Roll the shoulders. 
Now we're gonna also add in a little bit of the front. So take your left hand, you're gonna take your left fingertips, and I want you to, this is gonna be weird, I know, lift your right arm, put your fingertips right deep inside of your armpit, and your palm on that muscle right there, that chest wall, you can bring your thumb up. Let your right hand come down, and then press your palm into the chest wall, and turn your head away. And then start to bring, move your hand like you're going, pushing your chest wall up towards that right shoulder. Bring your head back to neutral and then back down, pull the palm down. So you're pulling that chest wall down towards your belly button and then back up again. And it might be a little uncomfortable and again, if you're missing lymph nodes, you want to be very gentle and not be squeezing and grabbing and pulling that area. Just be more of a lymphatic massage this way, like from the shoulder down into the chest. And then release. Take your right hand now, the one we just were on that right chest. Reach the right hand overhead, grab hold of the right wrist, and pull it over your head to the left. and then go ahead and release it all the way down. Take your right hand, those fingertips now, left arm up, going into the armpit, holding on to that part, let your hand come down, and gently turn your head away. Press up or down. You might find some tender spots under the armpit. It can get pretty tight in there. Our shoulders are so complex with all the different muscles, the rotator cuff, Really pull up and down. If you want to bring your arm up, if it feels better, again, play around with what feels like you're loosening that fascia tissue that connects up into that shoulder joint. Pulling up and pulling down. Good. And then bring your head to neutral. Release, bring your right left arm up. Grab hold of your left wrist, pull it over to the right. And then release. Final stretch, just to get the whole shoulder, upper back moving. Coming into tabletop, bring your roller across your mat and bring your arms nice and wide. You're gonna sink back in hips to heels and bring it wide and draw your left shoulder down to the floor and turn your head to the right. And just pause for a moment here. Slowly come up. Transition to the other side, drop your, so your right arm is straight, you're dropping your left chest wall to the floor, left armpit, left arm. And then come all the way back to center. Walk both hands back to the middle of your roller. Take your left palm upward, slide it the back of your hand across the, the mat and thread it underneath your right so the back of your shoulder and the back of your arm go to the floor. Counter stretch, lowering down. Feel that nice stretch. Wiggle those left fingertips. And then slowly come up. Place your left hand on the roller. Bring your right hand palm side up. Slide it under so your right shoulder goes on the floor. Wiggle those right fingertips. Feel that nice stretch. So not only are you stretching the back of your right shoulder, you're stretching through the armpit of the left arm because it's really reached overhead on top of that roller. And then slowly come up. Go ahead and have a seat. Bring your roller to the side, crossing those legs. A couple shoulder rolls. Up, back, and down. We got all the major tissue to connect to the shoulder, the upper back, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms out to the side. Place your right hand on the mat, left arm overhead, really stretch it. Come up and over, stretch the opposite way. We're gonna do one more tall stretch with a twist. So come on up and twist to the right. Reaching the left hand to the right thigh. Right hand behind you as a kickstand. Feel that nice twist through your upper back and your neck. And then slowly release the arms up and twist the other way.
and then inhale, lift all the way back up. Exhale the arms down. Did a great job today. Hopefully you're nice and loose. And we did some softening of tissue. Exhale, come all the way back down. Bring the arms up and down. Soften the tissue. We got our joint mobility up. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.